valuable. On a macro level, you know, we're looking at lack of jobs, lack of money, lack of resources, lack of education. Um, all of those, those things cause people to make desperate choices. You know, when people are struggling and in uncomfortable situations, they make decisions out of desperation. Um, so I think, you know, that's a factor. I'm also going back to a micro level. I think, you know, there could be more work to be done with teaching conflict resolution, emotional control, anger management, things like that. So I think, you know, some people commit violent crimes in a split decision or split second, making a split decision because they are angry, they're upset, they're emotional. And instead of knowing how to self-regulate their emotions, and have healthier coping mechanisms is, you know, very like, oh, I'm gonna just let this anger take over me and make life altering decisions in the heat of the moment. I think that happens a lot too. So a question that I think is important for people to, who are going through um, grieving and losing a loved one to think about is how can they keep the legacy of uh, the men uh, that they lost in their lives alive? And I wanted to ask you how you were planning on keeping Reggie's, uh, Reggie's legacy alive. So I, you know, like I mentioned, I'm early in this, not even four months. I'm figuring it out as I go. Mm -hmm. But so far, what I plan, what I will do to keep my brother's legacy alive, um, first and foremost, is my nephews. You know, my nephews are very young. And I feel that I have a great opportunity to step in a lot and just, you know, have a very active role in raising them and teaching them the things that I know my brother wanted them to learn, you know, about how to navigate the world and, and just how to, to be men of high character. I can say that my brother spent a lot of time, you know, just, and he was so young. I mean, he was only 26 years old. So he still had a lot of growing to do, but I can honestly say some days I was sitting and talk to him and just be amazed. Like, oh my gosh, like you really a grown man. You know, you you really growing up, you really maturing. Like, you know, it would just, it would blow my mind to see how much he was just evolving into like a grown man, you know? Um, so the things that I know that, that he would want them to say um, that he would want them to learn. Even at my brother's funeral, so many of his friends stood up like, you know, Reggie would tell me, you know, no, nah, calm down, it's not worth it, or no, nah, don't do that, or, you know, focus on this. Like, you know, a voice of reason for so many of his friends. Um, and honestly, even maybe two months before my brother passed, I called him and I'm like, you know, Reggie, you know, you, you just be so chill about things. Like, how, you know, how do you not let things get you riled up? You know, you're always so chill. So it was just, you know, good to see him um, grow that way. So to bring it back, you know, to keeping his legacy alive and just be really teaching his boys about him for sure. Um, but just, you know, the type of rearing that I know that he would want them to have so that they can be men of character. You know, he would want them to do even better than he was doing. So really just doing all I can to help them get to that point. Um, and also just taking on some of the qualities that my brother possessed. He had some really good qualities. He was very business oriented and um, really courageous and just very loyal. And oh my gosh, he had just like the most distinguished laugh. Like he just, he laughed just so from the, from the gut. Like he loved life, loved laughing very family oriented. So those qualities, you know, just really keeping those alive. And for as long as I'm here, letting people know my brother was here, that he existed, he was very well loved. And, you know, his life was just taken way too soon and very tragically. What would you tell Reggie's attacker if you had the opportunity? If I could go back to that day and have a conversation with him prior what? to the decision that he made, Hmm, okay, so I must admit, I've actually not thought about that one. <laughs> I guess, let's see. Uh, huh. Okay, I'm gonna answer that honestly. I don't know that me having a conversation with that young boy that day would have made a difference. I don't think that his actions were even unique to Reggie. I think, you know, his history at such a young age has shown what 
has shown the types of choices that he makes at this stage in his life. I think that if I were to have any impact on him, I would go back to the six-year-old version of him. Okay. And I think it's around that age that character, you know, well, I know for a fact, but characters develop, you know, around that age. So I want to go back to around six where his character is beginning to develop. And I think that the opportunity to have an impact on him, maybe even younger, four or five, but I would go back to the beginning. If I were to say anything to him at the point in which he, you know, was out on bond and committing crimes, I mean, again, I don't know if words could impact them, um, impact his choices at that at that point. I was wondering if there ever is a process to heal them um, after they've reached a certain point, or at least change. My professional trajectory. This was an interesting interesting experience. So I worked in a school and then I worked in a psychiatric institution at the same time. Now I've never worked in a prison. So the, I, I didn't work like directly with people who, you know, had committed murder and were getting mental health treatment within a prison setting. That is not what I've done. I have not done that. I don't have that experience, but I can say that it was really mind blowing. I would work in the school during the week and then I would go to the psych hospital on the weekends and I would have like a crisis situation at the school where like a student, I mean, oh my goodness, the things that those kids were exposed to. So, you know, whether it be seeing someone be murdered in front of them, you know, whether it be like sexual abuse or just, just all types of terrible things. I would go to school, you know, work at school, see them experiencing that during the week. On the weekends, I would be at the psych hospital doing my intake forms for what led to people either with their drug abuse or minor crimes. Again, I can't say that it was um, murder one or things like that, but you know, crimes or maybe even crimes like pulling a knife on their family or, you know, harming family members. And the things that they would tell me is they would go, well, when I was six, when I was seven, when I was, you know, five, this happened, this happened, or when I was 10 or 11, this happened, this happened. And the things that they would describe were the exact same things that were happening to my students actively at those ages. And it was like, it really messed me up because it's like seeing a cycle come full circle. Like, wow, you told me that this happened to you when you were six, this just happened to my student who's six. So this is, you know, where that path led you now I feel even more hurt. Like, what's gonna happen with these kids? And that, that, that. Oh my goodness, that one was like it, 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 it messed me up. Like it was, I, I don't even have the words. Clearly, it was a, um, that was a tough, a tough one. That was a tough experience, and I did that for two years. I know firsthand that it's not really easy uh, dealing with that um, when you have trauma, when you have, um, you know, things that can't really it's not really too many um solutions for dealing with a mm. like that and you know i can understand why people go to drugs why people um you know lose respect for themselves um because of you know having to go through that at such a young and impressionable age mm -hmm. yeah and another thing you know about the statistics that I was going through, I mean, in our community, interracial crime um, is a problem. And then it's also, you've got situations like this and a lot of them don't even go, um, you know, they don't even get reported. You know what I mean? Where you've got children being molested, where you've got yeah. things going on within the home. So it's really like so many different things attacking us at once. Um, that you can understand why, uh, you know, we are, you know, certain actions uh, that certain individuals in our community make. You can understand why they make it, but it doesn't justify it, you know. And even though I didn't work again, you know, in the in the prisons or jails, um, I feel very confident that if I were doing and taking sessions there, it would be a lot of the same. When I was six, when I was ten, when I was eight, you know. Childhood, that's again, that's the impressionable stage. So, you know, again, the guy who, who murdered my brother is only 18. You know, he's, he's a child still, he's 18.